Well, hi, everyone. Welcome back to Beacon Pines and the book. And more. More story. More yes. of it. We've got two branches now where we have two options. Or one option we've not explored yet. Both dire and involving a cold pit. We did get another... Oh, what was it? It had a, a bent spoon. Crooked, I think Crooked. is what it was, or something yeah. like that. Is that used anywhere? Not yet. Maybe it's bait for the fishing pool, or maybe it shows up later. Oh, yeah, that could be it. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot about all that. I think we should do refuse. Okie dokie. If that's good for you. Yeah, while we're here. Yeah. We shall instead refuse. Luca had no choice but to refuse Iggy's request. He tightened his grip and reached for the walkie-talkie in his pocket. A wild delight crept onto Mr. Kerr's face. That's a good lad. Now, radio for help. Iggy begged Luca with his eyes one last time, but Luca pressed the button and called out. We, we need help. Mr. Kerr is in danger. It wasn't long before they were once again surrounded by clipboards. Mr. Kerr sighed with relieved frustration. There you are. You really are a worthless lot, aren't you? You sent them away. Mirror, now. A clipboard dutifully produced an ornate ivory hand mirror, and Mr. Kerr began preening his tussled hair. Ah, that's better. Mr. Van Horn, I applaud your sharp thinking under duress. I'll put in a good word for you with the founder. Take them away. A swarm of hands overpowered Luca. The last thing he saw before a cloth bag was pulled over his head was the defeated look on Iggy's face. The end. Hmm. I think this was one of those times where doing the right thing was the wrong thing. Hmm. Fair enough. At least now we can hum. All right, so instead of us being here with Iggy and Mr. Kerr dangling in the pit, we've got Gran and um, Nuncreed fighting o to, like, stop Gran from dropping fire into the pit. Yes. And Rollo and Beck are off on the side, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. Just mm -hmm. catching up with where we are. Right. And we have the power of hum. Hmm. In the stillness... He began to hum. After the death of his father, Luca had trouble sleeping. Each night, his oh. mother would sit at the foot of his bed and hum a gentle melody. It was the only thing that could calm his mind. The only thing that, however briefly, could make it all seem okay. That melody pervaded every memory Luca had of his mother. Shivering in the raw snow, he began to hum it out loud. Gran lowered the torch, listening closely. I'm glad they have an actual hum here for this. I wasn't prepared to improvise such an important melody. Yeah. As recognition it's slowly lovely. set in, her heart sank. Those countless nights of consolation. The incomparable loss they shared together. She let the torch fall to the snow and sizzle out. A few steps toward Luca was all she could bear before dropping to the snow herself. Through a flood of tears, she began to hum along, note for note.
lifted his head in astonishment. The last time he heard that melody was the last night he saw his mother. How do you know? I'm so sorry, my little buckaroo. Buckaroo. The only people who call me that are my dad and... Your mother. Luca blinked through blurry, watery eyes, trying to see more clearly. He could just make out the impression of a familiar face. He peered across the snowscape at the woman on her knees. Something about her was undeniably his mother. Only smaller, older, changed. Mom? That's right, buckaroo. Mom! Luca sprinted as fast as he could toward his mother. They held each other close, and the cold retreated from their bodies. El Eleanor, I thought you were... Gone? You should have known I would never abandon my son. Eleanor looked down at Luca, tightening her embrace in an appeal for forgiveness. How? You're a smart man, Joseph. I'd have thought you'd pieced it together by now. You were exposed. Mom, I don't understand any of this. What happened to you? Where did you go? Why did you leave me? I never left you. I was always right here, Luca. Why did you lie to me? It tore me up, Luca, but I did it to keep you safe. I thought that getting answers would help us both move on. But the more I discovered, the more I realized the danger we were in. Until perennial harvest was stopped, it was better if everyone thought I was gone. You could have trusted me. These are bad people, Luca. They wouldn't stop until they got what they wanted. And they don't care who gets hurt in the process. Then what do we do? We have to stop them. Joseph slumped into the cold, wet snow. They can't be stopped. This is too big. I tried beating them at their own game. I'm done fighting fire with fire. For the first time in a long time, her voice felt like her own again. No more lies. I see now there's a better way to stop perennial harvest. The cold, hard truth. Luca gazed down at Nancreed with pity. He looked small. Joseph stared into the snow, as if searching it for answers. Come on, everyone. We've got a party to crash. You don't understand. He always wins. Mm hmm. Chapter 9. The Devil You Know Seven months ago, Eleanor Van Horn crept down the maze of sterile hallways under perennial harvest. She stopped in front of the large steel door marked Deep Engineering. No turning back now. She raised a trembling hand. The stolen keycard worked as promised, and the door buzzed open with mechanical efficiency. She was immediately hit with the smell of disinfectant. It was some sort of laboratory. In one corner was a desk covered in papers. Across the room stood a tall metal pod with hoses protruding from its base. She rushed to the desk and began shifting through the piles of papers. They were experiment reports on something called Tempest Liquimen. There were dozens of them. Every one stamped, failed. Eleanor heard the sharp echo of footsteps approaching. She was out of time. Her eyes scanned the room, eventually landing on the strange pod. Muttering a curse under her breath, she dashed over and dove inside. And that is what change is all about. I love the bunny family. 
I do too. Grabbing the future by the scruff of the neck and making things happen. Change is a choice. I am tickled pink that we will all be making that choice together. How great is that? This man is a liar. Excuse me? I will not. This town has a dangerous secret, and perennial harvest only exists to keep it hidden. Nonsense. They picked up the whole damn town and moved it right under our noses. You aren't making any sense, dear. Mr. Kerr addressed the crowd with a sarcastic tone. Imagine such a thing. It's absurd and just plain impossible. They promised they could fix the foul harvest. They told us they would clean this place up. We just had to leave town for a few days. But while they had us evacuated... Ms. Hartford, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to... You're afraid of a lot of things, aren't you? You sniveling little worm. This is growing tiresome. A little help, please. Don't you all see? This festival is a sham! An excuse to have the whole town gather in one place. They're planning something awful. I don't know what, but these people are wicked. Don't listen to her. She has absolutely no proof. I am the proof. I'm Eleanor Van Horn. Whispers filtered through the crowd. Well, aren't you just as as sneaky as... Aren't you just sneaky as the Dickens? We all knew Valentine's fertilizer was too good to be true. And now this whole town is paying the price. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry about this disruption. My associates will take this obviously disturbed woman somewhere comfortable. So that she can get the help she needs. She's not the one who's disturbed. You two-timing clown. You all know there's something wrong with this town. It was just easier to look the other way. The truth is... That's quite enough, Mr. Nuncreed. Torment dragged on Joseph Nuncreed's face. Yes, sir. Take them away. No, I want them to see this. Ah, the ever-tempestuous Ellen Van Ho- Eleanor Van Horn. You've been quite the thorn in my side. Like a weed that's burrowed in where it doesn't belong. I must confess, you look dreadful. He paused for a moment, plucking a piece of fuzz from his sweater and discarding it to the ground. Consider yourself in rare company. You've managed to put one o- pull one over on me. It won't happen again. I knew you had some sort of plan to disrupt our little party. But alas, I expected something a bit more impressive than incoherent rambling. No matter, your failures are yours to bear. Mr. Kerr. Yes, sir. It's a shame that it was cut short, but I thank you for that rousing oratory. I will take it from here. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. You have done quality work for me, William. You can look forward to the recompense we agreed upon. Kerr gave a bow of deference. Founder, you are most gracious. Gasps rippled through the crowd. Thankfully, we can dispense with the formalities from here on out. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. You can all call me Sharper Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. A 
a hushed horror gripped the crowd. This is a story about change. What? No! Ah, so you didn't see that coming. Good. Sharper examined his new hands. Well, this is quite the improvement. Everything looks so much smaller now. Eleanor was right about one thing. This festival was a ruse. I wanted you all to witness my glorious return with your own eyes. Why does everyone look so downtrodden? This is a celebration, people. Maybe it would help if we set the mood. Mr. Kerr, be a dear and reveal the sign. Wow. Ha! Wonderful! Sharper choked out a crude squawk of a laugh. Frustrated grumbles sprinkled through the crowd. Sharper, you malicious bastard. Mm. Ooh, new toy. I'm glad you're back so I can tell you to your face. You destroyed this town. We ain't gonna let you get away with it again. Sorry, this is not the time for audience participation. Some assistance, Mr. Kerr. William Kerr gave a subtle nod to the clipboards. You coward! Does anyone else have something to contribute? A helpless quiet settled over the crowd. I thought so. Did you all truly believe you could be free of me? A town of complete and utter fools. You people should be celebrating my return. You're clearly lost without me. And that leads me nicely to my children. Daddy? I gave you both the greatest gift a parent can give. The opportunity to prove yourselves in my absence. Squandered. To say I am disappointed would be an understatement. But I... Silence, Augustus. An adult is speaking. I don't know which is worse, a son who is completely hopeless, or a daughter with such potential who inevitably lets me down. Eris, you fail me with admirable consistency. Thankfully, I was counting on it this time. Father, I... Have been wasting time, my dear. What have you accomplished? I was focused on cementing our legacy. Legacy? Who needs a legacy when you can just live forever? But what about... It's all right, kiddo. I'm afraid you... I'm afraid you suffer from a complete lack of imagination. There's just no helping it. Now then, where is Joseph? You didn't take the opportunity to slip off, did you? Ah, there he is. Everyone should give him a hand. None of this would have been possible without Joseph. I think you've said enough. Nonsense. The people deserve to know how helpful and loyal you've been. I only did what I did because he left me no choice. You always had a choice, Joseph. You were simply too weak to take it. No matter. Cheer up. You are about to be rich beyond your wildest dreams. You should follow Mr. Kerr's example. When I found him, he was in a sorrier state than any of you. An aging actor, desperate to recapture his youth. He played his part, and soon he'll be able to play the leading man again. Forever, in fact, if he remains loyal. That goes for all of you. Well, those who haven't already frittered away my goodwill. Beacon Pines is mine again. And I am willing to share its spoils in exchange for absolute loyalty. Are you saying William Kerr was never in charge of Perennial Harvest? Ha! You think that puffed-up Blatherskite could have accomplished all this? Dawn, I suppose it's time for your big exclusive. Sharper addressed the crowd with indignant pride. He'd planned this moment for so long that now, at the deed's fruition, it almost felt frivolous. You see, I needed a figurehead to hold things down while I orchestrated my return. Someone to misdirect, lie, and bilk this town for a spell. So I invented William Kerr, 
Take your bow. You've earned it. Mr. Kerr flourished a preposterously elaborate bow. Patrick C. Montesquieu, thespian extraordinaire at your service. Founder, I just want to thank you again for this opportunity. Truly, it was the role of a lifetime. Wait. So this Bill Kerr was a Pat C. the whole time? <laughs> Bill Kerr! <laughs> Pretty good. That's perfect. <laughs> wow. Now that your secret has out in the open, what's stopping this town from rising up against you? Oh, that's the delicious part. Fear. Thanks to our clipboards, I know what each and every person in this town fears most. And I will make those fears manifest for anyone who steps out of line. The choice is simple. I'm not afraid of you. Ha! The young hero. I've been keeping an eye on you, boy. You and your friends made a habit of disrupting my plans. What a pity. If things have, would have gone a bit differently, you might have had your moment of triumph. But that's fate for you. You can't do this. Oh, but I can. I have won. Never underestimate what a great man can do, given time. And now, time is my plaything. Perhaps the most expensive thing I've ever bought. But well worth it. Ha! Sharper coughed up one final laugh and cracked his knuckles. Enough chit-chat. Let's get to work, shall we? And so, Sharper set about remaking the town in his own image. The fertilizer factory soon reopened for business. Sales rose steadily as more and more farmers across the countryside began to swear by its miraculous properties. Beacon Pines became famous, a secretive town that, for the right price, shared its gifts with all. Gifts that became more and more necessary in a world where winters grew longer and longer. Hmm. The end. This is wrong, but things are becoming clearer now. You can feel it, right? We can't let Sharper win. He might just be the key to this whole thing. Let's see. All right. So we talked about that possibility. Yeah, one, I did absolutely call this like a month ago. Not in not in the episode. I just yeah, had, no. had the thought as we I was watching back through the episodes in revision and just sort of made a note to mention to Carrie, here's my theory, just in case it came true. And it sure <laughs> just did. And it, yeah, it absolutely did. It was going back through and listening and uh, one, just seeing this little well-dressed tiny boy so showing eloquent. up in- you know, like eloquent little boy showing up in random scenes, but not seeming to have any place that he fits into anything. Mm -hmm. And then also at one point in a scene with Beck, uh, uh, it was explained that... Eris had to take an uh, ward. That was the word. Yeah, that Eris had received the inheritance, but on the condition that she take in a young ward. And... At the time, I had assumed love child, right? Yeah, and that's... And actually, maybe it wasn't Beck. It was Don. I think Don had mentioned that there was, like, some suspicions of infidelity or sowing wild oats or whatever else. But then, given we'd been seeing a whole bunch of stuff messing around that was, like, aging or de-aging things... It sort of, I sort of had the thoughts like, oh, wait, I bet. Oh, okay. I, oh, yeah. I had no <laughs> the idea. Little, little dog is actually Sharper Valentine, who is de-aged and has given his daughter, like, forced his daughter basically to adopt him. So she's not really inheriting anything. She's just holding it for him. Man. And what, a, what an interesting character he is. Indeed he seemed so. so sympathetic at first, like a nice kid. Yeah. Standoffish, weird, but nice. Yeah. I, I think, like, once I'd had that thought, looking at most of the things the kids said, there was definitely lots of... It's just a kid basically saying things like, family is inconvenient, anyone can be bought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Licorice is good. Yeah. Pure villain stuff. So... <laughs> Fair. Unfortunate that I ended up voicing him and Kerr, given that I don't really have much of a lower range. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm afraid they both ended up sounding the same once he got older, but 
True, true. Hopefully it's just that one scene. So I'm now also in retrospect, like mm-hmm. we've got a, we can use malice here and that's good. Ooh. I've got uh, a suspicion that some of the weirdly colored text stuff with their sequel joke mm-hmm. is also a hint. I think so. Uh, but I don't know what it was for. It it had two and there's something else in there. Charm, I think, was like And there were dashes. And there were some dashes and stuff. So I'm guessing that is at some point giving us a hint as to where we can find a specific uh, little tool here or where to oh. use it or some such to yeah. achieve a specific result we're looking for. But this is the only one we have currently available moment. and unused. Yeah. Why not? In this timeline, we... Let's see. We let Rolo go back to the farm, right? Hold on. Let me uh, see if I can. Not currently. Well, I'm sure it'll give us enough of a a grounding. I know that, that he is confronting us over something. And if we chose shame, then we would end up in the in the phone booth going down. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to. I can't remember either. We'll find out in a second. Yeah. Uh. There was a malice lurking behind those eyes, like a trap ready to spring. We're looking for Rolo. That's what it is. Rolo went with us. Luca felt the he wind went of missing. Hand on his shoulder. Okay, now I can get here. And Nuncreed wants to know what we know because uh, the whole town is looking for Rolo. So yeah, Branch here. We were uh, chill and Rolo had to go wander off. So we were by ourselves and we met up with Beck. Uh, in this direction, we pu- like we pushed Iggy in and mm-hmm. things proceeded from there. In this one, Beck uh, tickled... tickled and got hair partially grayed, and then we went off and ran off, and we started heading back, and we're starting to like okay. poke around, and ran into Numbreed yeah. and Rolo's started asking, not missing. started asking <laughs> the wrong. wrong questions. Yes, and I was wrong. Rolo is not missing. Rolo is safe with his family, and Beck has some white hair now. I think Rolo is still missing in this case. Is he? Yeah, this is the branch where Rolo is. Uh... Rolo only goes missing if he goes with us to the warehouse. And I think that hmm, this is where we go alone and spend time so with. Be a little chill or a little shit is the choice between Rolo going with us and not. Right. If he does go with us, then that's this path, right? And I, if he doesn't, is that path? If we go by ourselves, then that's where we are right now. I think so. Yeah, we go by ourselves. Yeah. He doesn't get caught. We uh, meet up with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is the Rolo doesn't go with us. He doesn't get caught. We escape and then like meet back and then we all start getting together and eventually uh, yeah. start trying to solve mysteries. Here, he, he does, does come go with, with us. Uh, runs, disappears. We start going and looking for him. Run into Beck. This all happens. And, uh, the whole scene with Iggy and Tish happens right. with us, Beck, Iggy, and Tish. Then Tickles, everyone leaves. We go wandering off still. Uh, and we're confronted wandering. by Nuncreed, who's like, if you know anything about where Rolo is, you've got to tell me. Right. And, and that's where we would have said we saw shame. And we mentioned something that basically uh, he, like lets him know that we've seen something. Yep. For what, that which he has to deal with. So, okay. But we can try Malice instead. And then maybe we won't say something unfortunate that gets us caught. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll be cautious. Sorry, this is such a ways back down the timelines. It is. And it's, yeah. So we had to... Hard to trace. Piece together which step led to what there. But yes, we got it. There was a malice lurking behind those eyes, like a trap ready to spring. Luca felt the weight of Nuncrete's hand on his shoulder. Something wasn't right. He didn't know why, but something was telling Luca to get out of there. I just 
want this to be all over. Of course. I'm sure it'll all work out soon enough. I should get going. I told Roxy I'd check for Rollo at the treehouse. Luca twisted free of Nuncreed's grasp. Of course. Luca, you know your dad and I were good friends back in the day. You can come to me with anything. Mm -hmm. Anything at all. That's good to know, but I won't. I'm going to go this way. <laughs> yeah. I'd break your window if I could. They don't give me that button. Also, it'd probably just get me in more trouble. But know that I wanted to. <laughs> Ooh. So then, who are you, other... Book person? Sharply dressed dog. Or these two? Yeah, let's start with book person. Just in case talking to these two is a mistake. You have to tell us. He looked down and muttered in a gruff voice. Mama always told me my problems would look smaller once I grew up. But my problems always seem to grow right along with me. Heavens, I sense big trouble ahead. Oh, good. I said that like it was Rollo's mama. Eh. Because Rollo's the only one who quotes his parents in this game. <laughs> True. And now I do remember this dog. This dog, they were talking the ones... about having sabotaged the sign. Yep, 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 yep. The festival decorations are a bit humdrum. Now, if I were to throw a festival, it would be a thing to behold. I agree. This is all more than a little sad. It's worse than sad. It's boring. What if we did a little something to spice things up? I'm listening. You know that festival sign waiting to be unveiled? It would be a shame if someone... The two scurried off, eagerly formulating a plan. That's silly. It is. Why would that other kid want to put Sharper Valentine's name on a sign? Great question. I'm sure it made sense at the time. <laughs> Last chance diner. Oh, yeah. Miss Fratelli. Don. Don. Don, we have info. Don. Don, wake up. Don. 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 Too much investigating. I guess. Sleepy. Can't go into the diner? Seems like no. Okay. What about down here? Hmm. Yes? Hi, Luca. What's up? You haven't seen Rolo around recently, have you? He doesn't come around here much. Not since they made a rule that he can only order decaf. <laughs> he should only have decaf. That's a crime. Get Rolo caffeinated coffee. Hmm, I don't know about that. Thump the, the watermelon. Oh, let's do, I guess. Thump it. <laughs> it's beautiful. Okay. Check for the candy shelf. Oh, yeah, the candy shelf. Hmm. I don't see a candy shelf. Fine. Don't think there's anything down here. Fair enough. All right. Treehouse, then? To the treehouse, or oh, this. or this. Uh, oh, it's the voice box thing. Identify yourself, oh. please. Nellie Moodwill. I work here now. I am unable to locate you on our staff roll. Oh, I don't officially start until tomorrow. Mr. Kerr said I could come in early tonight and to get a few things done. Hold, please. Clearance authorized. Thank you. Our harvest awaits. Sorry, I didn't realize it was the box. I thought it was her. And I was waiting for you to do it. Whoa! You could get a wrench to the noggin sneaking up on a guy like that. Don't scare a man while he's junkin', Sonny. <laughs> Evening, Jeff. Isn't it kind of late to be junkin'? I might as well ask the same thing of you. Find anything good? Ugh, ever since perennial harvest moved in, even the junk is trash. <laughs> you can learn a lot about a person by looking at what they throw away. With this bunch, it's all shredded paper and coffee cups. Well, I'd better get going. I didn't see nothing if you didn't see nothing. <laughs> see what? Exactly. <laughs> Still snooze? Yep. How are the bugs doing? 
Oh, you are not bug child. You're nose too much child. Oh, yeah. But no longer sharing information. Fine. Sorry. Keep your secrets, please. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants to tell you about Town Incorporation. <laughs> hey, Judson. Have you seen Rolo come this way by any chance? Afraid not. As elusive as a fish in this pond, this here pond. Oh, right. I should see to that. See if Crooked comes up. Yeah, we've got Maybe. new words. Like smack and crooked. Golly. Luca stuck a toy stretchy hand onto the hook. <laughs> Those things always get dirty anyway. This will be perfect. What better way to catch something out of a lake mm -hmm. than with your hands? Give it a good cast now. Come on, fish. Come on. Come on. Um, a bracelet? Should we give it to Mom? She likes jewelry. That's a sweet thought, Buckaroo. But I'm not sure she'd fully appreciate a pond bracelet. <laughs> Fair enough. Hmm. Luca tied a bent nail onto the line. If all you have is a hammer... Come on, fish. These fish will bite anything. Mm-hmm. If you had a hammer, I bet you could tie that on the end of a fishing line. Probably true. It's a photo of you and Uncle Joseph. Let me see that. Huh. Look at those two young fools. How did it end up at the bottom of the pond? Who can say? Some things are just hard to explain. I miss Uncle Joseph. How come he doesn't come fishing with us anymore? He's busy with his new job at Valentine's. What's a new job got to do with him fishing with us? It's complicated. Like I said, some things are hard to explain. Hmm. Interesting. Well, that's quite a haul. Feels like a good time to pack up. Ah, uh, just a bit longer. If things lasted forever, they might not feel as special, huh? I guess. I'll make you a deal, Buckaroo. If you ever feel like you need to talk about anything at all, you just say, let's go fishing, and I'll know what you mean. Uh -huh. Like a secret password? Yep, top secret. Neat. That's really sweet. It is. Hmm. Rollo? He aired a long holler into the woods. Rollo! <sighs> Rollo, wherever you are, I hope you're okay. Luca felt his eyes getting heavy and plopped into the beanbag. He conceded to its lumpy embrace. Once again, Luca found himself in a vast black expanse. This time, mm -hmm. he knew exactly where to go. He took a single confident step forward. The world flickered and pulsed. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire. The source. He plopped down cross-legged and gazed into the cold flame, waiting. Soon enough, the fire began to die out popping sporadically, until all that was left was a single ember. Luca stood up and dusted himself off. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash, examined it, and slid it into his pocket. I've always loved this particular Dark Souls 3 ending. A keepsake. The voice of his father spoke behind him. <laughs> you made me proud, Buckaroo. <laughs> Jeez! <laughs> Although the firekeeper calling us Buckaroo always did feel a little weird. Luca 
turned to face him. Dad, what is this place? A Ridiculous. warm grin grew across his father's <laughs> face. A place where everything that has been and everything that could be all wait together. Luca found himself hmm. staring at his father's face, trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Wait? For what? Another voice spoke out as Lucas Doppelganger stepped forward. That's up to you. Without knowing why, Luca began to weep. Mm. Is, is any of this real? Are you real? Luca's father bent down to smudge away a tear. Of course. I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Luca turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? The doppelganger choked back tears. Aww. I'm as real as the part of you that's angry he's gone. Does that make sense? Through his tears, Luca laughed. <laughs> I think so. His father mm. pulled him in for an embrace. Time to go, buckaroo. Luca was startled from his dream by a banging on the floor. Are you in there? A commanding voice rumbled from below. Hmm, that wasn't a just commanding voice, I just gave it. to lock the <laughs> entry hatch, the door knocked open. Oh boy. Chapter 5. Dangers big and small. Luca stumbled back. He heard the rope ladder creak under significant weight. Mm -hmm. Keeping his eyes fixed on the hatch, he inched backward to the balcony. As his hand grasped the door handle, Luca froze. A large figure clumsily wriggled up through the hole. Oh. Oh, dear. Stop right there. Or out. Sheesh, I know it's dark and all, but I figured you'd recognize me. Who are you? The large figure cocked its wow. head inquisitively. Look at how handsome. Stop now or I'll clobber you with a baseball bat. Whoa, 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 take it easy. Luca, you need to get your eyes checked. It's me, Rolo. Nice try, but I know you aren't Rolo. You're like one of his random uncles or something. Where is he? <laughs> Uncle. Luca, quit messing around. It's me. If it really is you, prove it. Flame and chicken coop, Luca. <laughs> dropped. He peered more closely at the man standing in front of him. Something about him was undeniably Rolo, only bigger, older, changed. How? What happened to you? When I was running away, I ran into more people in those yellow suits. They grabbed me and dragged me away. What? Where did they take you? Dunno. They threw a bag over my head. It was cold and smelled like a swimming pool. I think it was an underground lab or something. They made my hands all big. Look. <laughs> Rolo proudly presented his hands to Luca. They made my hands all big. Pretty sweet, right? I mean, it wouldn't be my first pick for a superpower. But beggars can't be choosers. Buddy, didn't you notice your all of you's bigger? <laughs> didn't you notice the ground was further away? Rolo, it wasn't just your hands. My feet, too? Dang, Pa just made me new shoes. Wait, Luca, why are you so small? Luca moved to the side and pointed Rolo to his reflection in the balcony window. What the? His hands shot up to his face. Holy Toledo! Rolo, what did they do to you? They made me drink some sort of green crud. Ew. Actually, it wasn't too bad. Kind of tasted like licorice. <laughs> oh, there's a connection. All right. I passed out and I woke up like this. And then I sort of smashed open my cage and escaped. Whoa. Whoa. You smashed open a cage? Kinda. <laughs> At least I think I did. It's all a bit of a blur. They had you in a cage? Who are these people? I don't know who did this to you, but we're going to fix it. Fix it? This is awesome. Well, I'm 
Just glad you're safe now. Luca, you don't need to worry about me. Sure, I got snatched, but look at it this way. I got snatched. I know where snatched people go. <laughs> we might finally have a lead on what happened to your family. Maybe you're right, but this all seems dangerous. Danger. Ha! <laughs> Rollo shadow boxed a few jabs. I'll take them all on. Oh boy. Hey, fellas. What's up? With a yelp, Rollo dove behind Luca. <laughs> ha! Take cover! Did I come at a bad time? Who the heck are you? This is Beck. Sorry, something truly bizarre just happened and I need help. I didn't know where else to go. So you're just hanging out here with your large adult friend? Uh, no. This is my buddy Rolo. Uh-huh. This is your missing friend. One and the same. He seems a little old. I'll have you know that this is a recent development. What the heck does that mean? Oh, I'm sorry. You're the one who just showed up out of nowhere. So we'll be asking the questions here. That's fair. How did you find us? Your silly little treehouse? I think you mean our silly little mission control. I hate to bring it to you, but your secret path isn't so secret. And I could hear your racket from a mile away. See, Luca, this is why we need to improve security around here. Not now, Rollo. Beck, you said something bizarre happened? Yeah, but... She shot a nervous glance at Rollo. Anything you can say around me, you can say around Rollo. This has been a weird day all around, hasn't it? Yep. Beck's eyes narrowed. Okay, so it all started when I made it back home. My first order of business was to try and salvage my hair. So I dyed it with some stuff from the chemistry set my mom gave me. That makes sense and seems smart. Definitely smart. Okay. I just need to play it cool. And hope no one notices. Notices what? Oh, nothing. I was just... <sighs> Come over here and let me have a look. Oh, honey, what in the world did you do to your hair? I just kind of felt like a change. This is going to take forever to grow out. You were the one who said that change was a good thing, right? I was talking about your mother's new job. I was talking about us moving. Well, I guess I just took your lesson to heart. And head. Tried to put on a smile. <laughs> Before I forget, I came here to tell you that Nellie had to go into work. Tonight? Her and Mr. Kerr decided it would be good for her to get some things done before tomorrow. That Kerr guy seems like a great A creep. Beck. He is! Him and his weird cult of personality. You are not going to ruin this job for Nellie. It means too much to her. Oh, I know exactly how much it means to her. It means enough to her to exile her daughter to this podunk town. This place sucks. The people are weird. You just don't know them yet. No, no, they are. <laughs> it's always cold. We're in the mountains. You'll get used to it. I can't even pick up a single decent radio station on, station on the radio. It's all banjo music and farm reports. And farm reports with banjo music, I'm sure. <laughs> you know I grew up in a town not that different from this one. Is that why you're better at talking to plants than people? Ooh. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. First of all, you're grounded. What? In the morning, I'll have Nellie come and see what we can do about fixing your hair. You need to look presentable for the festival. But... Not another peep. She sighed, and after a moment, I looked down at Beck sympathetically. Oh. I know moving is hard, honey, but that doesn't mean you can't. That doesn't mean you have to make yourself miserable all the time. Other people seem to have that covered for me. Oh, and if you decide to rebel by dyeing your hair more, she flashed a sly grin and tussled Beck's hair. I'll just shave it off for you. 
Think of how rebellious you'll look then. Very funny. Thank you. Good night, sweetie. Good night, Mom. Wait, 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 wait. First of all, this town does not suck. Second, you need help because you got grounded? No. I'm sorry you got in trouble. It's my fault your hair got screwed up in the first place. Don't worry about it. I actually kind of like it, like this look. Great. We can get back to the story now. The ne This next part is the important bit. I have this radio I upgraded with my mom, and I was too angry to sleep. So I tried to dial in something worth listening to. Um, Mr. Kerr, are you there? Mr. Kerr? Yes, I'm busy. What is it? Uh, apologies, I have the founder on the line. Patch him through immediately. One moment. Hello, sir. It's so nice to hear from you. Skip the pleasantries. What's your report on our new leader, lead researcher of deep engineering? Nellie Moodwell seems to be integrating nicely. At this very moment, she's working to help us meet our deadline. She offered to work overtime before I even had the chance to suggest it. Excellent. And you have faith that she's capable of finishing the work left by her predecessor? Her work must be complete before the festival. I will make sure she stays day and night until it's accomplished. Good. You know how I feel about loose ends. Yes, sir. Once she has finished the work, we need to make a... We need to make a determination regarding her long-term prospects in the company. Immediately, sir? I usually have some more time to fully bring people into the fold. We are in the end game, Bill. After your failures with Dr. Prescott, I can't afford to have to take any risks. Of course, sir. No loose ends, sir. Once she finishes the work, she will either leave the office completely committed to perennial harvest, or she won't leave at all. Perfect. Sir, if I might suggest, maybe we should delay just for a bit. Oh? It's just, we seem to be rushing to hit this festival deadline, and rushing into things has caused some... issues in the past. I see. Please understand that I just want what's best for you. I'm eternally grateful for all that you've done for me. Bill, I'll make this very clear for you. I brought you in to make things run smoothly, not to have opinions. Of course, sir. Chin up, Bill. You are only a few days away from having everything you ever dreamed of. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Just so we're clear, when they said loose ends, they were talking about murder, right? Like, actually killing someone. Capital murder. Luca gave Rollo a quick elbow to the ribs. Who's this founder? I was hoping you guys would know. Not as far as we know, Kerr is the top banana at perennial harvest. He sounded sort of... He sounded scared of this founder guy. So we have an even topper banana on the field. <laughs> what the hell is my mom caught up in? Has she talked about the job much? Not really. She said she was going to come in and continue the work of someone she respected. Luca, do you think that body at the warehouse was... the person Beck's mom came to replace? That would make sense. Beck, it seems like Nellie's predecessor got, um, loose-ended. I'm getting that impression. Okay, so we need to get your mom out of there before the festival happens. That's two days away. Won't you just come home after work? The creep on the radio said they were going to hold her in there until then. So if she's not coming out, we gotta go in and get her. Beck flicked a large sheet of paper out of her pocket and slammed it on the floor. Maybe this'll help. You have blueprints? Well, it's really just a welcome map from my mom's PH orientation day. But it shows the layout. 
Sure looks like blueprints to me. Look, here's the reception area. Here's a big room marked Founder's Office. It even has the exits marked. Guys, guys, guys. We have a deadline. We have an objective. We have blueprints. You realize what this is, right? Heist? To wiggle with excitement. I think we're heisting. <laughs> this is officially a heist. We're gonna heist Beth's Chapter mom. Six. We're gonna heist. The heist. They spent the night's end huddled around that small map, formulating a plan to infiltrate the headquarters of Perennial Harvest. It would be no small feat, a modern facility equipped with all manner of technology, not to mention the swarm of clipboards that would most certainly be scattered throughout. By the time the sun began to peek through the car window used as a makeshift balcony door, all were in agreement. This could just work. The final day before the festival would be used to prepare. They'd need to pull every resource at their disposal, pull every favor with a thread. Even enlist some unsavory characters around town with important tasks only they were suited for. Luckily, there was enough ill will and mistrust toward Perennial Harvest that alliances could be found at a bargain. <laughs> Luca, Beck, and Rollo rubbed their eyes as they exited the treehouse. They hadn't slept at all that night. There was no time. The festival was to begin in one day, and they each had their assignments. They're also each in huge trouble for not sleeping at home. Mm-hmm. All right, quick recap. Rollo, you're going to talk to Roxy. Cordially. Without her and Fitz, this whole thing could go bust. Me, Cordial, is my middle name. Uh-huh. And how do you plan to explain your new... He waved vaguely at Rollo's <laughs> sizable figure. Circumstance. Ah, she'll be so happy I'm alive she won't even notice. Beck Get snorted an involuntary <laughs> giggle. And Beck, you're sure Alana won't just shoot this whole thing down when she hears it? She'll listen. Once she understands the danger Nellie is in, the danger we're all in, the plan will make sense. Okay. That leaves me with Jeff, then Iggy. How are you going to persuade them? I'll think of something. They each looked at each other with sleepy confidence and nodded. Well, Godspeed. We have a task. Jeff seems simple. Iggy will take a little more work. Yeah, Jeff's going to be, like, Jeff's probably already planning a heist, and we're just going to kind of, like, dovetail the two together. Yeah. Iggy, as soon as we, as soon as we, like, direct it towards crimes and, like, <laughs> getting into nonsense, I'm sure Iggy will come around. I expect you're correct. Probably not too hard, but we'll have to find that out next time. What? Thank you all very much for watching, and join us next week for this. the heist plans. Ugh. Bye. Bye. <laughs>